Well, good morning. It's time to begin our service. I want to welcome you, uh, ask you to participate. We're about to go into some awesome praise and worship. Our worship team is going to lead us into the presence of the Lord. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to rejoice. We're going to honor our mothers in just a little while with, uh, with a message coming straight from the Word of God. Uh, I'm excited about it, and uh, I believe it's going to help you uh, through this time of struggle that you're in. And so uh, uh, get, get yourself settled. Get around uh, the TV, the biggest screen you can get. Hey, let me just say this. If you're unable to watch on Facebook Live, sometimes your uh, Internet may be a little slow and it may be boggy that way. There's a link that you can go to on YouTube. If you'll look uh, at the YouTube link, and uh, you can pick it up sometimes even better there. So I encourage you to watch it. Uh, share it with somebody, get a friend to come, sit down with you, worship the Lord. Don't just listen, but participate. Lift your hands, worship the Lord, uh, and let His presence come into your living room or wherever you're watching from. God bless you. Come on, our worship team's going to lead, lead us in the presence of the Lord. Worship the Lord.
found me, you found me. Father, you bought me with a price. Oh, so here I am to praise. Call me out of darkness. Silence every lie. No other voice will define me. 
something this morning I know you can't be here everybody's been asking but it was so refreshing to be here tonight be here and be a part of this we've been missing it I know you've been missing it people have been asking hey when are we going to have church let me tell you something I'll be so glad when we get back in church because me just being here and being a part of this tonight and for you this morning it's refreshing it was just a refreshing moment. And I tell you, I've been missing it. I've been missing the praise team. I don't like every one of you, but I miss it. And everybody's in chaos and all the stuff going on in the world. Everybody's got their own opinion about what's happening and, you know, who's to blame and what's going on. And when we're going to get back to reality, let me tell you something. As I was reflecting this week about everything, He's in control. I just want to let you know that. He's in control. Everything that's going on. But let me tell you something. If we 
could get as militant about what, what's going on in our society right now. And if we did the same thing about God, you see, because there's been a whole lot of people change what you do. There's been a lot of people stop going to places that they normally go. You know, you want to put on hand sanitizer. You're washing yourself. You're putting on masks. You're doing all of this stuff to prevent getting the COVID-19. Let me tell you something. If we were so militant about God and about sin and about death and sin, you see Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. You see, everybody's scared of COVID-19 about getting, getting that stuff on. Man, that'll kill you, man. All these people dying and all this stuff happening. Let me tell you something. It ain't about what we die here on this earth. It's about what about eternity? Are we going to make it to eternity? Are you going to make it there? If we would get so, we'd wash all that junk off of us and we'd put our mask on so we wouldn't say all the things we say and do. You know, if we would flip-flop this and make it all more about God than what everybody in the news and all that, we'd start seeing people get saved. We'd start people get, see people get healed. Hey, and you might even get saved. That's right. That's right. We may, we may up the ante from 50%. We may go up to 60. That's right. Amen. How many would like to get to 60? Can I hear Amen. I don't hear y'all out there. I see a bunch of your faces, though. Well, listen, happy Mother's Day. A shout out to all the mothers. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I even got ahead of my mother, my brother, and my sister today because it's already night. This is, I told her Friday night. So I'm ahead. Anyway, I'm here to take up the offering and the tithes. And I do have a note here. I know it's been hard to give, and let me tell you, I know that people are giving. Uh, I've heard the reports. We've seen the reports in our, in our board meetings and stuff, and let me tell you something. Y'all have been faithful, and God's going to bless you for it. It ain't for us. It ain't for this church. It's, you're blessing God, and in return, He's going to bless you. It's just the way it is. So if you hadn't been able to give and didn't know how, you can uh, text to next to 73256 or you can even mail it in to our P.O. box at uh, uh, 1026 Hurley, Mississippi 39555 either way or you can come by to the office and give. Let me tell you something God, you can't out give him. I ain't saying give it all but what he, t what he tells you to give, if you'll give that he will bless you beyond measure. So we're going to pray for our offering this morning. I don't know if they've been doing that I don't think they have. I think Brother Jimbo's been kind of doing it all to begin with. But, Lord, we thank you, God, for what you've blessed us with. Through all of this and through all of the stuff that is going on, we still thank you because there's provisions. You have, you have given us and you have multiplied us. And, God, we thank you for it. God, we just want to give back and we give to you out of the abundance of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I guess our pastor's fixing to get ready to come up. Worship with him. I'm excited. Amen. Henry, amen. It's always good to see Brother Henry, isn't it? Special guest in the house. He's here worshiping. We've only got a few people here tonight, just our worship team, just a couple other people trying to uh, thank you, ladies, again. Thank you, worship team. We appreciate y'all uh, giving up your time and coming and leading us in the presence of the Lord. It's always an honor to, to meet uh, together. Uh, and, and as Brother Jenry said, we're, we're going to do that very soon. We're going to do it in increments. We've got some things. I posted a few things, kind of giving you some updates. If you didn't see that update that I gave uh, Friday, May 8th, go and look at it to kind of give you some uh, information uh, of what we're doing next. And so um, we're going to um, uh, do some things a little bit different. As things are, are released, we're going to uh, release some things. And so go, go watch that if you will. Start with something funny. I didn't do that last week, and I had a few people say, we missed the joke. And so uh, I'm going to start out with a little joke somebody sent me. I don't even know where I got it from, but it's, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, we were out burning ditches when my husband got stung on the forehead by a bee. He's in the ER now. His face is all swollen up and bruised. He almost died. 
He was very lucky because I was close enough to swat off the bee with my shovel. <laughs> Look, if you think it's funny, hit a laughing mark or whatever, uh, and uh, I can't hear you laughing, but uh, I, I know that you probably are. Um, so look, here, I'm going to ask you to do a favor, if you will. Uh, when you're watching this message, if you'll take and hit that share button. I know a lot of you put the hearts on there and, the, you know, and, and comments, and we appreciate that. But I think it's important that you put, push the share button because when you do that, it shares it with your friends who I might not be friends with or somebody else might not be friends with. Encourage them to share it because we believe the Word of God is powerful. And there's more people we can get into their homes and be able to get the Word of God out to. It, it, it ministers to more people. And so do that. Share with somebody, share it with a friend. I know some of you are, have said to me, Brother Jimbo, we watch online, but it's just not the same uh, as being there in church. And, and, and I agree with you. I really do. And I know that some of you have been going and visiting some of the parking lot churches that are, some of the churches are doing parking lot church and then coming back later and watching it. We still have, you know, a lot of people that are watching, uh, watching the uh, full life service. And we appreciate you doing that, sharing it with somebody. And and, um, and uh, so the Word of God can go forward. Uh, the Lord has been very clear about some things. I'm very certain about several things that He's spoken to my heart about. And there's some, some things I'm just not certain about that He hasn't really spoken to me about. Is we're just going to have to, uh, you know, play it by ear, if you will. And, and, and as He leads and as He guides us, we will follow that direction. Um, so... Uh, we're going to go ahead and start um, our service today by, f by just simply saying Happy Mother's Day. Uh, I know that's cliche-ish, uh, and I realize that there are a lot of emotions and different kinds of emotions that are tied to this day. Uh, as we celebrate and honor and recognize our mothers, um, for some it's happy emotions. Uh, for some, it's not so happy emotions. It brings back uh, not good memories for some. Uh, you know, this may remind you of your mother uh, that maybe you have lost or, 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 you know, of, or even lack of even knowing your mother. Some people have never even known who their biological mother was. Uh, it may bring up memories of unforgiveness, um, you know, bitterness, resentfulness, uh, disgust, anger, uh, even hatred. I've talked to people who said, I, I hate my mother. And so uh, there are some that have regrets and they have remorse. So this day is filled with all sorts uh, of, of emotions. Uh, some of you, um, just the opposite. You had the best mom ever. And, you know, loving, kind, sweet, gentle, uh, you know, very, very... Um, very much uh, the Proverbs 31 mother, and, 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 and so your emotions are different, and you can't even understand how some people might would feel that way about their mother. So uh, I'm, I'm aware, as I preach this message this morning, that I have to be sensitive, uh, uh, but I have to be truthful. And so that I'm going to stick with the Word of God. Uh, so no matter where you stand and where you are, I believe that the Word of God uh, can minister to you on your level, wherever uh, you stand. Uh, the Word of God is powerful. I want, um, I want this morning just, I'm going to bring you to three different uh, women in the Scriptures. And we're going to focus on these three different uh, ladies. Each woman had their own struggle. Uh, each one of these women that I'll talk about today struggled, but they struggled in different ways. And so we know that uh, what, uh, what uh, struggle is all about. Matter of fact, the title of my message today is The Struggle of Motherhood. Uh, the first lady that I want to talk about, draw your attention to, is, is Eve. It's the first mother. Eve uh, uh, lost one of her children at the hands of of another. Now, I can't even imagine uh, losing a child, but losing a child at the hand of another, what kind of emotional wreck was she? What kind of struggles do you think she was having? Try, trying to imagine the loss, the pain, the hurt, the anguish that she had from losing one child, feeling anger towards Cain, who had killed Abel, 
and, 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 and wanting to comfort him but no, because she, she knew that he was probably dealing with, you know, the loss of his brother or killing his own brother, but yet she was angry at him. And, and you know, and, and so she was probably thinking, how could you have done that? I wish you wouldn't have done that. You know, did I fail as a mother? I raised them both the same way. What went wrong? The emotions of a mother, the struggle of the emotions that Eve must have been feeling. In the Webster Dictionary, emotions uh, simply gives a definition, a strong feeling toward something, a strong feeling, or a mental reaction. So we, you know, even though we, we can't... Um, we can't identify exactly with maybe what uh, Eve had been faced with. Maybe you never lost a child or you never lost a child at the hands of another child. Uh, so, so we know that, you know, we can identify with the emotions that she had. Uh, emotions can change your behavior uh, psychologically and physically. So, so, so we can certainly identify with the emotional side that she was going through. So, you know, something one of your children does to psychologically change your behavior. Uh, to, to, yeah, uh -huh, that's what I'm talking about. To disturb your, you know, to, to, disturb, to disturb you to a point where you snap. You know, when mama snaps, when mama gets emotional, when mama has had enough, uh, you know, her, her, you know, she turns red in the face and, you know, veins pop out in her neck and in her forehead and, you know, her lips perch and, 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 and you know what I'm talking about. When mama has had enough, her eyes bug out, her jaw bones and her jaw muscles start working. And, and look, look, when mama's had enough, Statements like this are said. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? <laughs> I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. Come here to me. How many of you ever heard that? Come here to me now. And when mama says that, you know mama has had enough. Mama has snapped. Her emotions have changed the behavior. Whatever the child has done has caused mama to become psychologically <laughs> imbalanced there for a minute. Uh, and so she asked questions. Did I raise you to act like that? Kids, listen to me. If your mama asks you that question, do not answer that question. You bite your tongue. If she asks you, did I raise you to act like that? You don't say a word uh, because it could be dangerous for you. And another statement, you know, if you, if you have a sanctified mama, I had a sanctified mama. If you ever push your mama, your sanctified mama, to the point of cussing, you better run for your life. Because if a sanctified mama cusses, you have went way too far and you're in danger. I'm talking about the struggles of motherhood. Eve had emotional struggles that she dealt with. We can identify, you mothers can identify with emotional struggles that she had. So what does the scripture say about emotions? In Colossians chapter 3 and 2, he says, set your affection on things above. And verse number 3, he said, now that you're a Christian, you have died to yourself. He said, your old life has passed and a new life has begun. Verse number 5 of Colossians, and so what he says, he says, mortify, kill, therefore, your feelings and your emotions like anger and wrath and malice and blaspheming and filthy communication, even cussing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know, I know that your children can push you to the point of cussing. I, I tell you what, my children, I'm a preacher, and my children have pushed me to the limit at times where I said, you're going to make me cuss. You have angered me, and you have uh, you got me so upset. that I, And some of you uh, have cussed, and I realize that. But the Scripture says this. He says, look, get a hold of your, mortify, get a hold of yourself, and don't cuss. How do you do that? Verse 12 shows you how to do that. Verse number 12, he says, you, uh, you have to put on mercies. You have to put on kindness and humbleness and meekness and long-suffering. You've got to change your garment. 
Look, look, when, when, when that garment of flesh comes on you and, and you are struggling with anger and, 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 and you're struggling with, with keeping yourself under control, maintain, look, you've got to just change your clothes. You've got to walk away. You've got to put on a different kind of garment. You've got to intentionally you know, not react in the emotion of the moment because usually decisions made with emotions aren't, um, that you know uh, are not going to be right, especially those um, that that you make in the moment. That's why if your children have pushed you to a limit uh, and you believe in spanking, which we do, we do. The Bible says uh, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from them. So uh, we believe in discipline. My mother was very patriotic. You know, she laid the stripes, I saw the stars. She used a switch. And so however you choose discipline, I do believe this is a biblical thing to discipline your children. No, don't, no, don't abuse abuse your children or beat your children to the point where, you know, it, it, it becomes abuse, but there is a discipline that, that goes with that. And I believe you can be out of control. So you need to wait until your emotions subside. If you're angry, don't whip them then. Give them time to go to their room. Give yourself time to go to your room. You think about what you're going to do because when you make an emotional decision based off of what you have, most of the time that decision is going to be wrong. And so get a hold of your emotions. Look, the second woman, the second woman that I want to talk about is, is Rebecca. This is found in Genesis 25 and 28. Rebecca, Isaac's wife, who struggled with favoritism of her two sons, Jacob and Esau. Now, it's time to get real. Let's just get real just a minute, ladies. Um, you know, mothers say, you know, oh, I love my children. I love all my children the same. I just love them different ways. Y'all say it like that. That was my woman voice. You know, you know, I, you know let me tell you something. Let's get real just a minute. I understand that we got, we're supposed to love our children all the same. And, and there shouldn't be any favorites. But let me tell you, I do believe this. I believe there's a struggle with Loving one, maybe, maybe you don't do it. Maybe you've got a control of that. But there could be a struggle. The Bible says that Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. <laughs> if you want to know if you're winning, if you're, you're actually doing this and not showing favoritism, just ask one of your children. Who's the favorite? They'll tell you straight up. They know who the favorite is. I mean, you know, you ask my two sisters. My two sisters will tell you straight up, Jenry. They'll tell you that mama loves me more than them. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're probably the same way. Uh, I, I'm just joking. But, yeah, yeah, I do believe that we can struggle uh, in, in areas of favoritism, we have to admit that. You know, you know at times, you just struggle with the idea. Uh, the only, only example that I could find was with women. Women have a hard time doing this. Uh, uh, they, they, there was no examples of men in the Bible struggling with loving one child above the other. It was always the women. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Joseph and Jacob. Jacob loved uh, Joseph, and so we know that uh, we know Isaac loved Esau. I'm just kidding about that. But 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 one child. Listen to me. One child can do no wrong. So sometimes one child is is really more obedient than the other child, and we just have to admit that. One child is an over. One child is sweeter than the, even though they're raised the same. You didn't do it. Their temperaments are just different, and because of that, because of the way they, uh, you know, uh, conduct themselves and how they're acting, causes us to emotionally feel one way over another way. The struggle. Uh, of, of loving one over the other. Uh, some, some, some just don't listen, and they, and they push your uh, buttons, and they get on your nerves. Can I, can I just say this without, I want you to hear what I'm saying. I, I put down in my notes here, the struggle of loving your children when you don't like them. Look, there's times, look, you got to be honest. We got to be honest. There's certain times our children can do certain things that we just simply don't like them at that moment. I've had to tell my children, I don't want to talk to you right now. It don't mean that I don't love, but the struggle of me 
uh, you know, loving them like I should. I don't want to talk to you right now. You've made me mad. You've upset me. You've disappointed me. I'll talk to you in just a minute. The struggle of favoritism. I think we can get over that. So there's a struggle. Struggle with motherhood is what we're talking about because mothers face, look, look, being a mother is not for sissies. It's, there's some str real struggles that women have to deal with and, and, and they're emotional and we, they're psychological that could change your behavior at any moment. So look, the third woman. The third woman um, is Jochebed. Some of y'all don't know who that is, but Jochebed was Moses' mother. It's found in Exodus chapter 2 and 3. Moses' mother, who caringly gave him up. <laughs> Think about that. The sacrifice of a mother. The struggle of a mother who gives her child up. Who gives him over in the hands of the Lord, having to trust God. Now listen, there are some mothers who have given their children over. Because they just simply couldn't do it. That they really felt like that, that, that their children would be better off being raised by other people in a different home, uh, by the hands of somebody else. I, I, I know that some have done this you know, selfish, selfishly, and some have done it for the wrong reasons, and, and, and I understand that. But there's some who've done it for the right reasons. And I've heard the, the criticism of how could a mother put her baby up for adoption? Well, the truth is, some of you who are listening to this message this morning were adopted, and you would not have turned out the way you turned out if that mother had not put you in the hands of the Lord and put you in the hands of a loving, caring family. So I'm, we're not here to judge that or to point fingers at people who have done that. I simply just want to bring out the fact that we want to see the struggle of this mother, uh, Jochebed, who gives birth to the one that was going to lead the children of Israel, over three million people, the leader, Moses, who was going to get the Ten Commandments from the Lord. He was going to be a spokesman for God. She did what she felt was right in her heart, and she I'm sure she struggled with that, uh, the idea of giving Moses over into the hands of Pharaoh's daughter. But she sacrificed. She gave him over into the hands of the Lord. And look what took place because she was willing to sacrifice uh, to the Lord. The struggle of a mother to give a child over, especially to the Lord. Uh, there comes a time when sometimes in life that we'll be faced with that struggle to give them over to God. I, I've prayed with mothers. I've sit and counseled with mothers who their children were, were drug addicts or they were prostitutes. And I've, I've talked to mothers who prayed, we did everything we knew to do. We've bailed them out of jail. We've spent our life savings. We've done everything we could possibly do to get our child uh, better. And they continue to, to go in that same cycle and go backwards. And, 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 and they, they did everything they in their power to be able to rescue and save their child. And it comes to a point where they said, we've got to turn them over to the Lord. We've got to release them in the hands of the Lord. We've got to give them over. We've done all we can do. God, they belong to you. And pray the hardest prayer that any mother probably could ever pray. God, do whatever it takes to save my son or my daughter, but don't let them go to hell. And look, look, when you pray that prayer, that's a struggle right there because you don't know what it's going to take. You know what the steps you've made and it didn't work, but what steps is God going to have to take to break their will? What steps is God going to have to take to, to bring them to the knowledge of saving grace? It may be rock bottom, the struggle, the struggle of releasing a child into the hands of the Lord. Oh, it's a struggle. It's got to be. I believe, I believe, uh, uh, 
Dedicating your children is very important to the Lord. I, I believe that you need to dedicate them to the Lord at a, at a young age. Train them up in the way they should go. When they're old, they shall not depart. Don't mean that they won't ever sin. Don't mean that they won't ever struggle. But we know that when we make that commitment, and God, we say, we put these children in your hands. We're releasing them unto you. Oh, let me tell you what. Uh, I believe that God is able to keep that which we commit to him against that day. So look, the struggle of a mother. I just want to address a few of you real quick, uh, especially during this quarantine time. Uh, struggles have intensified. It's, the, the struggle has gotten uh, you know, uh, uh, stronger through this period of time, especially you young mothers. I'll address the young, young mothers that have babies. Um, you know, normally, normally you're able to take them to daycare or drop them off at a family member's house or, or have a babysitter come in. And, uh, you know, so you've got a little relief. You're taking care of your, your baby, but you, you've got some help there. Uh, but during this quarantine time, you don't have any help. The, the daycare is shut down. Or, 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 or you know, pre, preschool is, is not going on. And so, so, so you, you're dealing with struggles of your own, different kinds of struggles, but they're still struggles. Feeding every couple of hours, changing diapers, uh, you know, with no sleep. You know, crying babies, you know, and they can't tell you what's wrong with them. You just know they're crying. I remember when Courtney was a baby. She was the, I mean, crying as baby. Oh, my Lord, we got no sleep. It would just about drive us insane. She cried all the time. She didn't sleep. And, and so we understand those struggles. The struggles of a, uh, you know, of young mothers with babies, potty training, you know, uh, uh, giving instructions and teaching and the teething and all the constants of it all. It, it just don't ever end. It's a struggle being a young mother. And then the mothers with, with small children, you know, the questions, why, mama? <laughs> you know, what is this? What, you know, why, you know, the why, the questions, uh, the mischief that they can get into. You can't leave them for one minute when they start walking around. I mean, they get into all kinds of stuff. I mean, you call yourself watching them, but man, they are busy uh, during those, when they're small children like that. I, I, was, I remember the story uh, when I was preparing this, that Courtney, she was real little, and she come walking in the room with a, uh, with a cord in her hand, with the, pl the, the plug end of a cord that had been cut off. And she told her mama, she said, uh, you know, I, I cut this cord off with daddy's pliers. <laughs> you know, so, so they can get into stuff just like that. Uh, I mean, uh, kids can, can be in the house one minute, outside the next minute, just getting in all kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the skint knees and the, you know, the, uh, the elbows, the broken arms, if you're the Ellisons. I think uh, the, the, when they had small children, every, every one of them had something broke every month. It was an elbow, it was a, you know, it was an ankle or a leg, an arm. Somebody had something broken. Dealing with those small children uh, can be very, very, very challenging. It could be a struggle. And then those with teenagers. Listen, when your kids become teenagers, this is the moment the parent's brain gets sucked right out of your head. You become the most stupid person in the world when your children turn teenagers. You're dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. They've got all the answers. And mom and daddy don't have, you know, any sense because you're dumb. And you got to stay on top of things, helping them make right decisions and choices, who they're going to hang out with, what kind of friendships they're going to develop, you know, who they're going to date and who, you know, what about school? I mean, all kinds of things to deal with when you're dealing with teenagers. And then the young adults, you know, you think, do they ever grow up? Do they, does the struggle ever end? Well, uh, young adults, you got to, you got to let them make their own mistakes Probably one of the hardest things that I've learned, uh, you know, as, as having uh, kids that are young adults, is letting them make mistakes that you could help them with. I believe sometimes you've got to let them go. You've got to let them make some decisions, and you can give them advice. They need to listen to your advice. But if they don't, let them make their own uh, failures, and they'll learn from those mistakes. Young adults, uh, and every, they all, they're, they're, they're there. And so there's a struggle of knowing how much uh, to help them with and letting them uh, become their own. And then, then as they grow up, they bring more 
with them that are just like them. They bring other babies back that are just like them. And the struggle of motherhood uh, continues. Struggle of motherhood is not for sissies. I believe it's very difficult. And so, so dealing with that, let me tell you, I, I'm not a mother, and, and so, uh, but I've, I've, uh, I've got my wife, who's the mother of my two children, and I know my mother, who has is, is, is raised the best son in the world. Uh, look, I know a lot of mothers, deal with a lot of mothers. I'm not a mother myself, but I do see the struggle. I do see that motherhood is not easy. A lot of times it's all on you, especially during this time right now, where you're having to do things right now that you normally uh, you know, don't have to do. It's all on you. You're, you're by yourself a lot of times, and you're struggling with that. Struggle of motherhood. Look, I believe the Lord is here to help you with that. I'm going to read a scripture to you. I was praying about how to close this out. Our worship team is going to come, and we're going to play this song one more time. I ask them to play this blessing song that, uh, that we uh, ended with just a minute ago. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. I'm going to pray that over you. Uh, if you're a struggling mother, no matter what area you're in, no matter what um, a stage of life that you're in in motherhood, I believe the Lord will be able to help you during this time of struggle. And so if you'll go with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 6 and verse number 24 through 27, I'm going to read it to you. And then we're going to sing about it. And we're just going to let the Lord touch you right where you are. This song that we sang, some of y'all uh, just thought it was just a song. But this is a song that was got, this was, has been written from, directly from Scripture. And I believe that's why it's so powerful. Romans 6, 24 through 27. It says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give you peace. And they will put my name upon the children of Israel. You can, you can just actually put your child's name where the children of Israel are. And here's what he said. And I will bless them. Not maybe, not might, not if. But God said this prayer is effective to the point where if you pray this prayer, I am going to bring a blessing. And let me tell you what, what God blesses, no man can put a curse on it. Look, look, what God touches and what God says, I will make prosper. It may take a little time. It may not be in your timing. But let me tell you what, what God said is true. And he will do what he said he would do. You've got a child right now that's wayward. You've got a child who is, who's not living for the Lord. You've taught them the right way, but they're going, they're, they're, they're way away from God right now. We claim them right now in the name of Jesus that God's blessings upon them will draw them, put a hook in their mouth and draw them. The struggle that you have right now of letting and releasing them to, to the Lord, just do it. He loves them more than we ever could. I know it's hard to understand that, but He loves them with an everlasting love. And so when we release them into the hands of the Lord, let me, what we're saying is, God, Lord, I trust you more than I trust me. I trust you to deal with them in a way that I could never deal with them. You know them because you created them. You made them after your own image and likeness. So God, right now, I pray for every struggling mother to do what, what you have called us to do this morning, to, to get our emotions in check. Lord, to, to, to uh, deal with, with uh, uh, our, our mental capacity to a point where we say, Lord, you know, check me. Make sure that I'm doing it the way you want me to do it. That the old man is dead and the new man's alive. That I am more Christ-like than ever. And God, help me to release my children to you. I give them to you. You might want to just pray that with me. God, right now, I give my children to you. And I pray that you would bless them and you would keep them and let your face shine upon them. May your peace be in their life and bless them and draw them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So I bless your home. I pray the struggle that you're going through would be peaceful. Look, God never promised us that there wouldn't be a struggle. 
Matter of fact, he said, in this life, you'll have some trouble. You'll have some tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <laughs> oh, let me tell you what. Be of good cheer, Mom. The Lord is your victor. He's the one that's going to bring you out of whatever you're in. So I say peace to you in your home. Shalom to you. Blessings be upon your house. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Can we give the Lord a big shout of praise? The two or three of you that are here right now, can we do that? Just bless you right now. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Happy Mother's Day.